for Charm TV and everyone, I think we're getting ready to begin. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, whenever we're ready. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's Thursday, March the 9th, 2023 docket. Um, we are here at room 215 in City Hall, 100 North Holiday Street. And um, do you have any opening remarks, Mr. Chairman, or shall we just begin the docket? Let's begin. All right. Good I morning. That's my opening remark. Oh, <laughs> good morning. Item number one on today's docket has been postponed to a future hearing of the uh, board, which brings us to item number two on today's docket. Levy Baltimore LLC trading as Levy. 333 West Camden Street. This is an application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor arena license under the provisions of the Alcoholic Beverages Article 12 1001 D1, which authorizes the license holder to sell beer, wine, and liquor by the drink or by and by the bottle within the arena from one or more outlets for on premises consumption. As per Alcoholic Beverages Article 12 1001 E, the arena shall have a minimum capital investment, include, not including any real property of $1 million and a minimum capacity of a thousand people as determined by the city fire department applicants also requesting live entertainment thank you mr blendy good morning your honor members of the board for the record my name is linda carter and it's a pleasure to be before you today on behalf of levy which is the new concessionaire at oriel park at camden yards uh, with me i have one of the licensees and i have the answer man greg costa who who will be living at the stadium um, uh, pursuant to the contract with the stadium authority and with the, with the birds, he will be at every event that is held at the stadium. Let's uh, let's swear your witnesses, okay? Gentlemen, please raise your right hand. Oh, oh where's our reporter? She's in the back. She's oh, in the sorry. Oh, okay, I. This is new to us. You fooled me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's doing only audio. Oh. Okay, so when you speak, please uh, speak into the microphone and give us your name before you do, okay? But you can start, Ms. Carter, if you'd like. Okay, thank you. Um, your Honor and members of the board, I've submitted or provided you with an orange book that we would be mo asked to be moved in, please, as applicants exhibit number one. It will be received. Thank you, sir. Um, we have indexed it, and in addition to having the resumes for the three applicants, one of whom is here today with me, we have the, uh, the Baltimore Orioles Levy Food Service Agreement, and that specifically provides that um, Levy has to put in at least $1 million. And we have provided with the board, and I believe it's actually a supplement to the very back, proof that the million dollars has already been paid to the, the, the Orioles. In addition, um, as an, also as a supplement, we provided the board with a copy of the annual report of the Baltimore Orioles Limited Partnership, the, the, the synopsis, if you will, that's available from SDAT. And that shows a current personal property value in excess of $3,090,000. So at least $4 million is there, and we seriously believe that's an underestimate, but there's at least $4 million there. We also provided the board with, and this is also a supplement at the very back, the 60-day notice from the city of Baltimore. And that says the assembly capacity of Oriole Park is 48,565 seats with an, an additional 400 standing. So I think we've complied with the million dollar investment and the thousand seats. I think it's 1,500 actually. It's oh, is seat. it? I apologize. So I thought it was, a, I thought it was a thousand under the rules. You're in excess of that as well. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely, just a few. Um, we would proffer to the board that Oriole Park at Camden Yards has operated under this type of license at, since inception over 30 years ago, that it accommodates, what, a million customers a year many of whom have enjoyed having a beer or wine or an alcoholic beverage with their food items. Levy is a very experienced operator. They currently operate more than 400 facilities, a list of which is included in here, um, many of which are professional stadiums, arenas, and the like. In Maryland, they currently also operate at FedEx Field. And we've been counseled to Levy at that location actually since FedEx opened, and Levy has never had a violation at that location. 
Um, with that, sir, um, with this being the, pro the book being the proffer, if you will, and knowing you have a full agenda, I'd like to have the first applicant. Gloria, your full name and address, please. Good, good morning, Sharif Falari Dasumu, 1167 South Humphrey, Oak Park, Illinois, Chicago, Oak Park, Illinois, 60304. And sir, what is your occupation? I am an attorney to general counsel for Levy Restaurants. And sir, you've, you're making an application today with a owner's license. Yes. And you understand that as a licensee, this board has the right to hold you responsible should a violation occur. Yes. And you're comfortable that under Greg's leadership, there will be no violations of this location. Very confident, yes. Sir, you filed an application with this board in which you made a number of representations regarding yourself and, regor and regarding the stadium. Are all of those representations still true and accurate as you appear before the board today? Yes. And Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I would have no further questions of this witness. Commissioners, have any questions? No, I have questions. Okay, thank you. Great, you're the answer man. Although I'm surprised that a lawyer would be willing to take on this uh, additional <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> Thought you would know better than that, but. Good morning. Good morning. Your name and address for the record, please. My name is Greg Costa. I live at 1017 Mariner Road, Joppa, Maryland. And you've recently moved to Maryland, correct? Last Monday. And that's because you now have a full-time job at, yeah. <laughs> at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Yes. And can you please tell the board uh, briefly about your history, your, your uh, occupational history? I am the Vice President of Hospitality and Strategy for Levy Restaurants at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Currently, I just re uh, moved, relocated from Las Vegas after seven years there, and prior to that, five years at uh, Barclay Center in Brooklyn, all with Levy Restaurants. And I'm not going to burden the board with a long history of his occupation, but there is one part of it I, I found very compelling and I do want him to share with you. And that has to do with your beliefs regarding the sale of alcohol. Yes, uh, I've long believed that I, I have two policies that are both philosophies that I have and I share with the staff. And one is that I never want anybody to leave the ballpark or a facility with a beer or a drink in their hand. Uh, that's one, right? And two, the second one is to make sure that the blood alcohol content is going down as they're leaving the building, and therefore cutting off the alcohol earlier in the event uh, warrants that. So those are the philosophies that I live by and, and do that. Plus I'm the trainer as well. I do the training for responsible alcohol service in all the buildings I oversee. And your policy regarding, how many employees will you have at this location? We'll have an excess of 900 people working with us. And what is your policy regarding the training and alcohol awareness? Uh, nobody works with that response alcohol service training. It's a four-hour program, must be certified, not only on top of the state of, of Maryland, in which we're in, but one that we do with inside Levy, every team member. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I would have no further questions. Commissioners have questions? No. I, I do have a question. Yes. So, so how do you, um, just out of curiosity, someone comes up to a concession, if I understand this correctly, and purchases two beers, right? They show ID, proper ID, how are you able to control if that second beer goes to a, an underage? Well, our philosophy is to ensure that everybody gets trained. So a dishwasher, a somebody that's in security, somebody that's a cashier, somebody that's working it can see that as well. It takes all of us to serve alcohol responsibly, not just the cashier. Thank you. Uh, so I have a request, and that is that it, uh, on your white wine list that you expand from, sh from Chardonnay to a little Sauvignon Blanc? Not a problem. Okay. Consider, Thank you. I, I, consider I, I it done. I appreciate that too, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Some of us are not big Chardonnay fans. Okay. Um, Unless they're unoaked, then they're okay. Um, <laughs> anything further? Nothing further, Your Honor. We would respectfully request that the license be issued. All right. Thank you. On, on the basis of the materials contained in the application and proffers from counsel and the testimony received as well as this extensive um, combination of documents enclosed in this booklet, which is Exhibit 1. I vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor arena license with live entertainment. Based upon the application, uh, the extensive uh, exhibit uh, before us, um, and the agreement by the uh, applicant, which is incredibly important that you include Sauvignon Blanc, apparently. <laughs> I too would approve this application for a new class B beer, wine, and liquor area license with live entertainment. Based on the application filed and all the documents submitted and testimony given today, I too approve the application for a new class B beer, wine, and liquor arena license, also requesting live entertainment. Ms. Russell? I'm positive for the record. Board is it a one business plan. 
Thank you, Council. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You. Good luck. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Council's received instructions on which documents must legally be submitted in order to for the board to issue the license that they preliminarily approved today, which does not expire, but hopefully will happen on or before April 6th, 2023. <laughs> Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Please. Item number three on today's docket, P&M Property Solutions, LLC, trading as Edna's Place, 2148 Wilkins Avenue. This is an application to transfer ownership requesting uh, delivery of alcoholic beverages for a Class D beer, wine, and liquor license. For the record, Melvin J. Kadensky, 320 North um, Charles Street, representing the applicant. This is a do-over, basically. The applicant was approved. We went all the way through, we got a fingerprint and got it, the alcohol awareness. It was one of the building inspectors. We couldn't get it done even within 180 plus the 90. Uh, so they're having to uh, reapply at this point, and this is what the hearing's about. But they were approved, I think, back in November 21, the same, uh, same application. So, Ms. Proctor? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's hard whether you wear a mask, isn't it? Uh, I'm sorry, what? It's hard when you got to wear a mask as to who everybody is. Yes, I agree. There, it's one thing we agree on that. Okay. <laughs> so it, there, it's basically, like I say, a do-over. It's the same. Um, they've been in there uh, helping run, out the, run the place ever since then. And at um, this point here, I think we got all the um, city agencies just about ready to sign off after renewal. Okay. And, and this is the one that has outstanding violations? Is that and right? One. And it was one that was one of those 10 o'clock. Um, it hasn't been heard yet. No, this is a, diff oh, a different, a different one. one. Oh, this has okay. And this is the one just had it was the ten o'clock. Oh, you're right. People were in, but they they okay. weren't selling, and now they know they can't even be there after ten o'clock. All right. Um, okay, so they're aware of the closed time. All right. Uh, commissioners have questions? None. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis then of the materials contained in the application proper from council and the fact that we have previously approved Ms. Proctor um, for the transfer. Um, I'd vote to approve the application to transfer the ownership of this Class D beer, wine, and liquor license with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Uh, based upon the application, the proffer, and the fact that we approved this same applicant back in November, I would uh, again approve this application to transfer ownership with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based on the application filed and the proffer given by the attorney today, I also approve the application to transfer ownership requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Ms. Russell? No, is it is for the record. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Uh, Council is receiving instructions uh, from this agency on how to legally complete this transfer that the board preliminarily approved today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. And just a reminder that this particular license location is subject to uh, specific restrictions on hours from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Let's Shall do move? the next one, yes. Yes, sir. Item number four on today's docket, Savita G LLC trading as York Club, 5407 York Road. This is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license and an amended application to transfer ownership from a contract purchaser. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Commissioner. Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of the applicant, Savita Gajari. Uh, Mr. Cooper, city president, is also present. Uh, hasn't come up, but I don't know that he'll his testimony would be necessary. Do you want her to testify? Um, I'm happy to give a proffer. Okay, let's go. Sure. All right. You, uh, Ms. Kajari uh, has extensive experience in alcohol, uh, retail alcohol sales and management. She has worked with the family store at 5917 York Road since 2009. She's alcohol management certified. And as you may know, this is a you know, kind of a long matter. The building was structurally unsound and about to fall over. Um, Ms. Gajari and, and her family put about a half million dollars into it to renovate it and um, make it ready for the for another hundred years. Uh, most importantly, the applicant signed an MOU with Midgovins Community Association quite a while ago. We had a hearing. It was one of our last uh, virtual hearings, so it's probably been over a year. And at that time, we didn't. We missed the deadline by about a day on getting that MOU into evidence. And that was one of the reasons this, this case was postponed. Is that the, because again, there was no uh, person, uh, no person to person hearing that the board was simply you know, 
not able to accept the MOU. So, um, I'm, you know, that, that MOU has now been in the file for well over a year. This since. one's dated March 5th of this year. Yes, so they did go ahead and execute a new MOU. I did send a copy, and I have original ink here, if the board were, would like to accept that. I think we're all right. I okay, mean. all right, and again, as you can see, the licensee uh, has agreed to reduce the hours provided by law, closing at midnight Monday and Wednesday, through Wednesday, 1 a.m. on Thursday, uh, 2 a.m. Friday and Saturday, and again uh, at midnight on Sunday. Additionally, there'll be 24 hour security cameras which will be shared with the Baltimore Police Department. The premises will be kept free from trash and litter. No loitering signs will be posted and will be enforced by communications to BPD as necessary and that they will obviously maintain uh, modern lighting on the premises. So um, I would ask you to approve this transfer. I believe there's Have you a seen the letter of opposition? No, I have not. I've not been so we notified of one. We received a letter of opposition from the York Homeland Community Association. Not quite sure who that is. I actually got to tell you I'm not either. In fact, the addition to our, um, or this new MOU, that was from March 5th indicates that, uh, that well, it originally York Road Partnership was gonna be on this. Um, I don't know that they're on this now, but, but this is news to me. Okay, Lisa O'Reilly, I do recognize that name. And um, I, she, okay, <laughs> since you ask if I have any opinion on it, you may remember in our last virtual hearing over a year ago that Miss O'Reilly made the statement before your honor, under oath, that even if the Pope were opening a liquor store on this block, I would oppose it. So with that, I would say um, that Midgovins, the immediate community uh, stakeholders are um, pleased and ready to work with this licensee or this applicant. And also, um, sh if she were here today, which I'm kind of surprised she's not, it's my understanding that she no longer lives in the neighborhood. Yeah, I don't, we don't know. Right, so we don't know. Okay, um, and your client is willing to have the terms of the MOU uh, be a part of her license? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, commissioners have questions? No, no questions. All right, thank you. Um, on the basis of the materials contained in the, and it's, why is it amended, I'm sorry? Uh, it was amended because we changed the company from, um, from there was another company and then it became Savitag LLC. Okay, so that's the only. Just a corporate amendment, no, no changes to requests. <coughs> Right. of the service premises. Okay. On the basis of the materials contained in the amended application to transfer this BG7 beer, wine, and liquor license uh, from a contract purchaser uh, on the basis of the proffer from council and the MOU, which has been received in evidence, and the terms of which will be applied to the license to the extent they're enforceable by law, I vote to approve um, the transfer. Uh, based upon the amended application, the proffer, uh, I too would approve this amended application to transfer ownership from a contract purchaser uh, with the uh, terms of the memorandum of understanding attached to the license to the extent it's enforceable by law. Based on the application filed, the amended application filed to transfer ownership from a contract purchaser, I also approve the uh, application and um, I approve it with the MOU attached to that license. Ms. Russell. And because it's for the record, Board of Civil 1, MOU, Board of Civil 2, letter of opposition from York Homeland Community Association. Thank you. Good luck. Is it Ms. Gajari? Is that how you say it? Yes. Thank Good luck. Thank you. Very that much. concludes this matter before the Board. Uh, Council has received instructions on how to legally complete the transfer of ownership, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's preliminary approval. Um, shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes. Item number five on today's docket, Hurley Comedy LLC, trading as the Port Comedy Club. Uh, this is an application to transfer ownership and location Can of a club. I just want to say hello to our former chief, Mr. Fossler. Oh, hey, Mark. <laughs> well, thank you. Good to see you. Hey. Yeah. Good to see everybody. Good to you see too. you, Mark. Hey, chief. Stay well. Hey. I'm sorry, Mr. Mount. Yes, of course, Your Honor. Uh, recalling item number five on today's docket, Hurley Comedy LLC trading as the Port Comedy Club. Um, this is a an application to transfer ownership and location of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license presently located at 2218 Boston Street to 813 South Bo Broadway requesting live entertainment. And, and to, if I may, um, explain a little of the 
uh, exceptions that allow this uh, to be considered by the board by statute. 12-1706 um, prohibits transfers within specific wards and precincts in the 46 alcoholic beverages district, which both the existing license location and the proposed transfer location are located. If certain exceptions apply, I believe Mr. Hurdle has indicated that specific to this application, 12-1706-D-2, little IV-1 is the, which is that this subsection does not apply to the application for a new license or a transfer from within the areas described in paragraph one, which are those prohibited wars and precincts, if the new license or transfer is for an establishment that has a seating pack capacity of fewer than 150 individuals. Okay. Mr. Hurdle, good morning. Thank you. Uh, Abraham Hurdle, filling in for Bruce Covahey, who was the attorney who filed this application. I believe he's tied up in court on a different matter. With me is Mr. Hurley, who is standing to my right. Um, just to briefly run through, um, we, Mr. Buendy is correct in referencing the exception that we plan to transfer this license in. It is going from an area in Canton to an area in Fells Point. My client took it upon himself to meet with the community, in fact, on his own, which is typically highly inadvisable in this situation. Um, and there is an MOU that he negotiated on his own as well, which again is always something to be handled gently. Um, Mr. Hurley does have a special background. While he has limited experience in the alcoholic beverages industry, I will let him proffer his academic background. Mr. Hurley, beyond running the- Before you do that, we have to swear him, okay? Absolutely. Please raise your right hand. Sure. Um, we swear our comedy. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Hurley, beyond running the comedy club, what is your background educationally? Yeah, so it's not Mr. Hurley, it's Dr. Hurley. I got a, got a PhD Sorry. in biochemistry, used to work at uh, the old Johnny's Hopkins, um, worked in a lab in the psychiatry department, and uh, yeah, I started a comedy club in October. It's been going good. So and that's one of the things I wanted to clear up here. There's a purchase price for the business list that is 125. That's the purchase price for the license alone. Again, this location has been open and operating as a comedy club without alcohol for a handful of months and been doing just fine. This should allow them to do an increased business there is an MOU with the community. People seem to rec have received the business very well in the area. We anticipate that will continue. Um, this will help the business flourish as well as contribute more to the local community in that regard. Dr. Hurley, you're willing to have the terms of this MOU be part of your license? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, commissioners have questions? None. Uh, any evidence that it's less than 115? Yeah, we actually have a fire capacity currently. I think it's 65, is that correct, Dr. Yes, Hurley? Yes, sir, yep. Okay, so it's like, okay, that's, I want to make sure it meets. And it may even come down a little bit more because currently there's no bar, so we anticipate it being roughly the same. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, on the basis then of the materials contained in the application, the proffer from counsel, testimony received, and the exhibit which has been received, which is a memorandum of understanding between the applicant and the Fells Point Residents Association, um, I vote to approve the application to transfer ownership and location of this class BD7. Um, liquor license, beer, wine, and liquor license, presently located at 2218 Boston Street to 813 South Broadway with live entertainment, subject to the terms of the MOU to the extent they're enforceable by law. Based upon the application, the proffer, and testimony, I too would approve this transfer of ownership uh, and location of this Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license, presently located at 2218 Boston Street to 813 South Broadway uh, with live entertainment. Subject to the terms of the memorandum of understanding to the extent they're per, uh, permitted by law. Uh, to approve the application for transfer of ownership and location of a class BD7 bear wine and liquor license presently located at 2218 Boston Street to 813 South Broadway requesting live entertainment. It is an MOU that has been agreed upon. This is, be, this is to be part of the uh, agreement. Ms. Russell? I close the episode of the record. What is it, bit one, MOU? Thank you. Good luck, Thank you. sir. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Council is receiving instructions from this agency on how to legally complete this transfer of ownership, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's board, uh, preliminary approval by the board. Shall I move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Item number six on today's docket, L&L &L Independent Living LLC trading as New Club Thunderbird. Uh, premises are located at 2201 East Chase Street. This is an application to transfer ownership of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. 
Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Previs on behalf of the applicant, Geraldine McLaren, who is to my immediate right, and also with us is Ms. Radnaya Williams, who is the owner. May I proceed by way of a proffer? You may. Thank you. This is a transfer of a Class BD7 for the new Club Thunderbird um, at 2201 East Chase Street, which is a, a neighborhood bar that's been there for many, 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 many years. Uh, as if you recall, we were here recently with regard to a violation notice for a 10 o'clock closing in the 45th district. Um, we endeavored to file a transfer application. Uh, we did that on a um, special ad and we were put on this docket with amazing speed and we're here to consummate the transfer. Um, and the violation is going to be heard later, is that correct? That, yeah, that's fine. Um, so, Ms. Williams is the 100% owner of LNL Independent Living LLC, which will be the entity, and it will continue to trade as New Club Thunderbird. Ms. McLaren is, um, lives in the neighborhood, uh, it's close by, and will not be an owner, but she will um, be at the premises um, oftentimes uh, to make sure that, since her name is on the license, that everything is running properly. They fully understand now that they are in that zone for the 10 o'clock closing, and, and less than until that law is changed, can be changed. Hope springs eternal, doesn't Hope it? Spring, Hope springs eternal, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, you wouldn't even be able to watch the end of the Super Bowl. You'd have to wait till the... Well, because they dance too long in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> too much halftime. <laughs> we ought to write to them. Anyway. Um, so it's going to continue to operate as a neighborhood bar. It's open seven days a week. Uh, there is an a, a, a afternoon shift. Um, there's one, one person there from 1 to 5. There's another person there from 5 to 10. Um, and it's basically run as a neighborhood bar with just one bartender. Uh, there are occasions where there may be a party um, that, that somebody's requested. And in, in that event, there would be more staff and there would be security. But otherwise, it, it, it has been running as a, as a quiet neighborhood bar for all the time that I represented the, f the former owner, Mr. Player. Um, so we, we, we intend to continue. We can intend to comply with the law, intend to fight the law, but intend to comply with the law, and most respectfully request that you grant this transfer. Ministers, have any questions? None. No questions. All right, thank you. Ms. Previous, on the basis of the materials contained in the application, um, and the proffer from council. Uh, I vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of this BG7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Based upon the application and the proffer, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership. I also approve the application to transfer ownership based on the application file and proffer given by the attorney. Thank Russell. you very much. Now is it for the record? All right, thank you, good luck. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Um, Mr. Freevis, per, as the judge indicated, per 12-1705.1, the board can't complete the transfer until we resolve the outstanding disciplinary procedures. Uh, the intention would be to hear it at the next available hearing of the board. Are, is there any reason that you would be unavailable? Uh, we can follow up after. Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd have to check my calendar. Right. I think I... Thank you. Thank you so much. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Please. Item number seven on today's docket, um, Bayview Incorporated trading as Bayview Liquors, 3804 Eastern Avenue. This is an application to transfer ownership and a request for delivery of alcoholic beverages of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the Gary Maslow on behalf of the applicants, um, these two ladies are gonna take over the operation at um, uh, Bayview Liquors. Uh, they are both uh, alcohol awareness certified. These are their um, certificates, which I'd offer at, at this time. They'll be received. They are familiar with the rules and regulations of this board um, and their efforts to be diligent to make sure that no one under the age of 21 is, is in fact served or sold alcoholic beverages. Uh, they're gonna increase uh, security at this location by adding some more security cameras uh, they're going to reach out to the police department and make contact with them to make sure that uh, to introduce themselves and to cooperate fully with, with the uh, local police. This is a very fine um, area in, in the Highland Town area across from uh, a, a supermarket. Um, and they are, uh, well, they're going to be employing um, a different uh, a manager to work there. Um, as well, 
and are looking forward to taking over the uh, operation. Will the manager be TIP certified? Yes, everyone who works there will be uh, alcohol awareness certified. It has a long history of violations, so I hope they're aware yeah, of that. I, I, made that. I made them fully aware of that. That's why they're being extra diligent to make sure that uh, anyone who works there is alcohol awareness certified. Okay. Commissioners have questions? No. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application and the proffer from council, I vote to approve the application transfer ownership of this BG7 beer, wine, and liquor license with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application and the proffer, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a uh, great day. The other commissioner hasn't ruled yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Based on the application filed and the proffer given by the attorney, mm -hmm. I also approve the application to transfer ownership requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. Ms. Ross. Thank you, Mr. Jones. <laughs> My phone zip is for the record. Board of Zip 1, alcohol awareness certification. All right. Thank guys, you. Good have luck, a great ladies. day, guys. That concludes this matter before the board. Council's been given instructions on how to legally complete the transfer of ownership, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's preliminary approval by the board. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Item number eight on today's docket, EDP Seafood Incorporated trading as Fadley's. Uh, current premises are located within the old Lexington market, and this is an applicant application to transfer ownership of a class D beer and white light wine license from the former or the older Lexington market uh, to a new location at the new Lexington market 112 North Utah Street stall 21. Okay, who's going to speak for you? Oh, <laughs> traffic jam here. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg, Martin Greenberg on behalf of the applicant and I'm joined by my colleague, Ms. Tilden, who is passing out some folders with some exhibits. We have a bit of a family affair here. And <laughs> so I'd like to introduce the folks that we have here. I have with me William Devine and Nancy Devine, who are our individual licensee applicants. Mr. Devine has been on this license since the 60s and has had no violations in all that time. So, I noted that. Uh, and then Ms. Bazina is our Baltimore City licensee, who, if I recall correctly, from the, the family tree is a cousin, also a member of the family? No, sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Sister -in -law. Sister -in -law. Okay, sorry. And then Damie Hahn is here, is here as well who's involved in the operation, and Ms. Han's son, I think, is here as yeah. well. We have several Family. generations. Yeah, <laughs> um, three, four generations. Four generations. So with your permission, I'll proceed by way of a proffer. You may. Um, I, we've handed out a folder full of some exhibits that explain a little bit about what's going on, but the Fadley's license has been um, in Lexington Market since the 60s. Fadley's was established in 1886 in the original uh, Lexington Market. Um, it was run in the, the old Lexington market until the fire closed it in 1949. It reopened in 1952 in its present location. And now they're in the process of relocating to the new South Market, uh, which Seawall has been redeveloping. And we were here several weeks ago um, on a market license, marketplace license for Lexington Market as a whole. Uh, but Fadley's is going to continue to operate under their existing Class D license, which again, they've had since the 60s without any violations. Um, they, they, interestingly, were the very first operation um, to have a, a on-premise consumption license issued for uh, use in a city market. Um, so this is, this is a history. Are you transferring ownership or just location? The, uh, there is a transfer of ownership to a different entity. It's the oh, same individual licensees, but the entity is changing for some corporate structure reasons. Okay. Um, we've included in the file a copy of the floor plan. Uh, they'll be located in stall 21, as shown on the plan. There's a copy of their individual layout as well as the broader market layout that shows where their stall is located within the market generally. Um, as I mentioned, they're not part of the marketplace license, so they, their license premises is separate from that and will be, you know, they'll, they'll operate under their own separate license. Um, they um, have had a longstanding policy of carting anyone who appears to be under the age of 35 and limiting the sale of alcoholic beverages to two drinks per food purchasing customer, and they will continue that in their new space. Uh, as I mentioned, our individual licensee applicants are, are here today. Mr. Devine has been on the license since the 60s. Um, he is uh, involved in the day-to-day -day operation, and uh, Mrs. Devine is here as well. Behind me, I'm sorry, I need to have my back to you. Um, she's been the kitchen manager, and she's on the license as well. And Ms. Mazina is our Baltimore City licensee, also a member of the family. They are all familiar with the rules and regulations of the Baltimore City Liquor Board and are agreeable to abide by them. Is that a crab on your 
Absolutely. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm the crab lady. I love oh, it. So. Very nice. So um, we've also included in the file a letter of support from the Downtown Partnership, which enthusiastically supports the transfer of the license to the new location. Um, with regard to the criteria the board is required to consider, there is a public need and desire for this license. It's been in place since the 60s. Fadley's is, is an institution in Lexington Market and in the city generally. Um, it, it will not have any impact on existing licensees. They will not be part of the Lexington Market Marketplace license, but they have existed in Lexington Market for many, many years. Uh, they have a uniqueness of services. Fadley's crab cakes are famous nationwide. They have a shipping operation where they next day air or ship them um, all over the place. And we don't expect there to be any negative impact on health, safety, general welfare, um, as demonstrated by the Downtown Partnership's letter of support. So for all those reasons, we would request that the board approve the transfer of ownership to the new entity and the new location within the new Lexington Market. Yeah, I think I mentioned when you were here on the Lexington Market that it was our favorite lunch spot when I was in law school 50 years ago. <laughs> we're, that crowd is about to get together again. We'll be re reminiscing about that, I'm sure. I was probably there. <laughs> You wouldn't serve us alcohol because we weren't, <laughs> weren't 35. Yeah. Commissioners have questions? Just a first one. Why are you moving from the market to a... We uh, didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're still in our space. We're and the only, one to we're the we're only, the only ones, ones left in there. But we will have to move, and I'm not happy about it, but <laughs> we will have to move in September. Okay. Anything else? Nothing. All right. Uh, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, uh, the extensive proffer from Council and all the documents submitted in support as well as the letter of support from the Downtown Partnership um, and testimony received, uh, I vote to approve the application to transfer ownership and location of this Class D uh, beer wine uh, license presently located within the Lexington Market now to 112 North Utah Street, Stall 21. Uh, based upon the application and the proffer and the letter of support from the downtown partnership, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership and lo location of this Class D beer wine license presently located uh, within the Lexington Market to 112 North Utah Street, Stall 21. Based on the application filed, the letter of support and proffer given by the attorney, I too approve the application to transfer ownership and location of a Class D BW license presently located within the Lexington Market to 112 North Utah Street, stall number 21. Ms. Russell. I close it for the record. Board is exhibit one, business plan. Board is exhibit two, letter of support from downtown partnership. Thank you, good luck, folks. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Keep making the crabs. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes this matter before the board. Council's received instructions on how to legally complete the transfer of ownership. The board preliminarily approved today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Item number nine on today's docket, GNPLLC, trading as trade name pending. Premises are located at 3133 to 35 East Monument Street. This is an application to transfer ownership and request of delivery of alcoholic beverages of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Abraham Hurd on behalf of GNP LLC. With me is Mr. Prabhan Vendari, mm -hmm. the 100% owner of this license. Ms. Deardorff was unable to be here today, if Go I may ahead. proffer. Go ahead. This is a repeat application. Uh, this is one of the many that seem to have gotten kind of tangled up between, I think, COVID and Mr. Boozer's uh, untimely passing. Um, Mr. Bandari has been running the store under a management agreement um, from the seller for some time now. Prior to that, he had nine years of experience managing a liquor store. And he plans to hopefully continue on with his ways with no violations. Proceeding forward. Okay, because um, this place did have some violations, but I don't think he had it at that time. There were some problems at this location in the past. I don't think Mr. Bandari has been there while the problems have occurred. And is he certified? You are alcohol awareness certified, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. I, I think that ultimately there was just a couple of glitches that kept everything from getting closed roughly a year ago. I think we had a closing on the purchase in, I want to say, was it March of last year? Yeah. Um, and ultimately, there were just some things that caused some hiccups with the transfer at the last moment. Okay. Commissioners have questions? No. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, the proper from council, um, I vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of this BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based upon the application, the proffer, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership with delivery of alcoholic beverages. Based on the application filed and transfer 
Based on the application file to transfer the ownership request and delivery of alcoholic beverages, I approve this uh, application based on the uh, proffer by the attorney. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No, it was for the record. Okay, good luck. Thank sir. you, Commissioner. It's good to see you. Thank, Thank you, Deputy Hart. Uh, that concludes this matter before the board. Council's received instructions on how to legally uh, complete the transfer of ownership, which by uh, the board preliminarily approved today, uh, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Item number 10 on today's docket, Frank's Bay Tavern, LLC, trading as Frank's Bay Tavern. Premises are located at 4507 Pennington Avenue. This is an application to transfer ownership, requesting live entertainment of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Yes, uh, good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Commissioner Stephen W. Fogelman. On behalf of the applicant, Frank Sapushek. Uh, Mr. Zapuszczak and his wife, Karen, uh, have been running Frank's Bay Tavern on Pennington Avenue uh, for coming up on three years three now. Years, <laughs> yes, we, um, we, I'll never forget this matter because Mr. Zapuszczak uh, first appeared before you on March 12th, 2020, and that would be the last time I would get to see you guys in person for almost two years. Um, due to inspection delays and a pandemic you know, uh, chaos, he, the original application expired. So the license is still active, but he has filed to go ahead and finish this time. He uh, ran into just a few days, ran out of time. He had a tax issue and that's been resolved. So he should have this license activated in his name in a matter of days. Okay. Uh, as you see, you've got a, a letter of support from the community. He's already been alcohol management certified to the best. Also, oh, and one, there is one new request with this particular application. In the meantime, over the last three years, he went to zoning and was approved for live entertainment. And so since he had to come back and file this application anyway, he obviously wanted to and What's that. the nature of the entertainment? The nature of the entertainment will be karaoke, um, an occasional DJ with, you know, with pre-recorded music and possibly an occasional band for, say, St. Patty's Day. He did receive, and I, I mean, I have the, the petition and support of the live entertainment request. He's an incredible neighbor down there in Curtis Bay, former Baltimore City police officer. Many of his customers are former city police officers. There's a parking lot. It's a good place to have, it's well lit, it's eyes on the street, and uh, he's, he's really an asset to that neighbor. Okay, commissioners? No questions. No. All right, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application and the proffer from council, as well as the letter of support from the Community of Curtis Bay Association, uh, I vote to approve this application to transfer ownership of this BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license with live entertainment. Based upon the application, the proffer, the letter of support from the Community of Curtis Bay Association, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership with live entertainment. Based on the application filed, Profit given by the attorney in the support letter from the community uh, to approve the application to transfer ownership requesting live entertainment. Ms. Russell. I call this for the record. Board is in one. Lot of support from Curtis Bay Association. Thank you. Good luck, Thank sir. You. Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Council received instructions on how to legally complete the transfer of ownership the board preliminarily approved today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Item number 11 on today's docket, Admirals of Fells Point, LLC, trading as Admirals Cup. Premises are located at 1645 Thames Street. This is an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Thank you, Mr. Blundy. Anastasia Thomas Nardangeli on behalf of the applicant. Good morning. This is a redo. We've been here, we have had this hearing already, and the applicant was unable to get the inspections completed and get the license, the transferred license picked up in time. Um, I'm not going to have anyone offer any testimony. I'd like to proffer that all of the factors um, considered by the board when we had the original hearing, which was a virtual hearing back in December of 2020, um, have nothing has changed since then. Um, we are just asking to, we had to reapply because of the time frame for okay. getting so the license. So the same applicant, all the same uh, qualifications and everything that was previously approved. That is correct. Okay. Commissioners have any questions? 
None. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis of the materials containing the application, the proffer from Council, and also on the basis of our prior hearing with respect to this applicant, I vote to approve the application to transfer ownership with continued live entertainment and outdoor table service. Based upon the uh, application, the proffer, uh, the fact that we've already approved this applicant, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. Based on the application filed and proffer by the attorney, I also approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service, also <laughs> noting that this hearing has always been acted upon. Ms. Russell? I'd call the exhibits for the record. Um, letter of consideration from Fells Point Resident Association dated March 6, 2023. So is it this case? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe that case, letter is for the, this. I think that's for the next case. Oh, I think that is for the twelve. What is the we'll seventeen ten ten? Okay. We'll hold off on that. Okay. Uh, thank you, Council. Good luck, sir. And that concludes this matter for the board. Uh, Councils receive instructions on how to legally complete the transfer, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's preliminary approval by the board. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes. Item number 12 on today's docket, Admirals of Thames LLC, uh, trading as Waterfront Hotel. Premises are located at 1710 Thames Street. This is an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Thank you, Mr. Blundy. Anastasia thomas Nardangeli on behalf of the applicant. I have with me uh, the, ap the individual applicant, Vasilia Circus, and did I say that right? Okay, said that wrong. Um, and one of the managers of the restaurant, Darren Mislin, both are here to provide testimony if needed. So can well, we, we swear them in? Okay, can I swear them in. Gentlemen, the reporter's back there. <laughs> okay, why don't you begin with the proffer? I'm proffering that this is a redo. We have already had this hearing for this particular transfer as well. None of the factors have changed. None, nothing about what we are asking for has changed. Again, we did not complete inspections or pick up the license in time to get the new license, so we have to. We had to reapply. And have you seen this letter? I have, yes. So what's the story? This letter is referencing something that we would like to do, which is to, to expand to an adjacent lot. Um, we have not done that. We, we intend to, to apply and to um, review what we need to do to, to be able to do that. But at the moment, we are seeking the app to pick up the license that we applied for and that we have been using, which is what we've been using it under the former owner, which is for 1710 Thame Street. And, and as far as the noise goes, they're subject to our rules and regulations. So if they are excessive, we'll, we'll violate you. You understand that? We've never been, we've never been cited for anything. Um, I agree. You, you have a clean record at this point. Um, all right. Well, we'll just hold that uh, unless commissioners have questions. Done. I just want to make sure I understand so we're clear. On the, on the outdoor seating, you need to pick up this license in order to address that issue? To apply for it and address the concern that's raised in the letter. Right. The letter is concerned that we would use another lot, and we certainly will apply for that and request to do it. But at this point, we're picking up the license for 1710s. Okay. Understood. Okay. Thank you. On the basis then of the materials contained in the application, proper from counsel, any testimony received, and the fact that we have previously approved this applicant, um, I vote to again approve. The application to transfer ownership of this BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license with continued live entertainment and outdoor table service. Based upon the application, the proffer, and any testimony received, um, and the fact that we already previously approved this applicant for this uh, location, I too would approve this application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. Based on the application filed and the proffer by the attorney, I, too, approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. Ms. Russell? Yes. Um, I'd like to call exhibit for the record. Letter of consideration from Fells Point Residents Association. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. 
Thank you. That concludes this matter before the board. Council received instructions on how to legally complete the transfer that the board preliminarily approved today, which by law must occur within 180 days of today's hearing. Shall we move forward, Mr. Chairman? Please. Item number 13 on today's docket, Marta Baltimore LLC, trading as Marta Fine Food and Spirits. Premises are located at 2127 East Pratt Street. This is an application to expand the premises to add outdoor table service for a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Good morning. Can I ask you to raise your right hand, sir? Good morning, yes. Please tell me the truth and what you do not about the truth. I do. Thank you. Okay, and your name for the record? My name is Matthew Edding. Uh, good morning. Good morning, and I am the, uh, the owner of the property and on the liquor license. Mm -hmm. uh, this is essentially an application to add table service to my existing liquor license. Uh, we might not have had to been here had I gotten my liquor license two days prior to getting my outdoor dining license, but it happened 36 hours later, so here we are. So um, I do have the MOU if you guys need it. Sure. I can submit that. Um, Butchers Hill Community Board. So where is the outdoor tables where it's going to be? The outdoor tables are located on the, uh, obviously on the outside of the building, uh, <coughs> against the building, allowing a walkway uh, in between as required. How many tables do you It is five tables. Five tables seating approximately four people each. I can, I can testify to the fact that you're always crowded. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, sir, I need those tables. But what you need more than tables is parking. <laughs> yes, sir. I, uh, <laughs> I looked into getting some valet parking permits. Um, that'll maybe be down the road. Okay. And you've entered into an MOU with the Butcher Hill Association. Are you willing to have terms of that be part of your license? I am indeed. Okay. Um, commissioners, have any questions? None. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, the testimony from Mr. Edding, am I saying that correctly? Edding, that's correct. Edding. Wow. Um, First the, time. Um, uh, MOU with the Butcher's Hill Association, the terms of which will be made part of the license to the extent they're enforceable by law. I vote to approve the application to add outdoor table service. Uh, based upon the application, the testimony from Mr. Edding, I too would uh, grant the request to add outdoor table service, service subject to the terms of the MOU to the extent they're enforceable by law. Based on the application filed, testimony given by Mr. Uh, Edding, uh, to approve the uh, request to add outdoor table service and the MOU is part of the license. Ms. Russell. I'd pause for the record. What is exhibit one, MOU. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you so much. That concludes it. <laughs> that concludes this matter before the board. Licensees received instructions on how to legally complete the required document submissions in order to have the license reissued with the approval that the board preliminarily granted today. Uh, shall we move forward, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Item number 14 on today's docket, um, contract purchaser trading as no trade name, uh, 718 to 22 South Broadway. This is a request for a 180 day hardship extension under the provisions of the alcoholic beverages article 12-2202 for a class B beer, wine and liquor license. Good morning, are you Mr. Barshop? I am, good Could morning. You raise your right hand please. So you've written us a letter. Um, on January 17th saying that you're seeking a 180 day extension looking for a long term tenant to rent the space. Is that correct. correct. Anything else that you want to add to this? No, I personally have no intention of ever operating a liquor license. I mean, this is not my world. I don't even drink alcohol. You, uh, you operate a bar shop, right? <laughs> no, this happens to be my name, but honestly, I don't think I've had six ounces of liquor in my entire life. Well, probably good. Um, well, I've saved a fortune probably. Uh, so you think within 180 days you can uh, make this transaction occur? Um, I'm hoping from 180 days from the first 180 days. Okay. So yes, I'm, I'm in discussions with one group right now, but you never know how that goes until you have a signed contract and, and everything else. We've owned, the, we've owned the property since the 1960s, and this has been a restaurant bar since at least prior to that. Okay. We've been at Vells Point since 1928, so we have a long-term commitment to the community by, by a long shot. Great. Commissioner, have any questions? No questions. Nine. All right, thank you. On the basis then of the uh, letter to the board dated January 17, 2023, as well as the testimony from Mr. Barshop this morning, vote to grant him a 180 day hardship extension for this license. Based upon the testimony received, the letter of January 17, 2023, I too would grant this uh, request for a hardship extension for 180 days. Based on the letter of January 17, 2023, 
testimony given by the owner. I also approved the request for a harsh extension of 180 days. Thank you, Ms. Russell. No, it was for the record. All right, thank you. good luck, sir. Okay, thank you very much, board. That concludes this matter before the board. Um, there are no follow-up documents. Our, our docket for the day? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, that is all the matters before the board today. You want to read our adjournment? Yes, sir. The Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City shall stand in recess until Thursday, March 23rd, 2023, 10.30 a.m., room 215, City Hall, 100 North Holiday Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. Again, th as always, thank you to the commissioners and the members of our agency for doing a great job, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Thank you.